I'm Anna Ebling, Canva Certified Creative, and today I want to show you how to create an aesthetically pleasing Instagram feed, as well as schedule those posts right within Canva. Let's jump on over and check out how to do this. The number one thing when creating an aesthetically pleasing Instagram feed that you need to remember is you must have consistency. Consistency with colors, fonts, and images. Now this feed example is an eclectic looking feed, but we do have consistency between the fonts, the style of coloring. You'll notice there's some repetitive pink, orange, green, yellow here. And the shapes, there's round, round, round. Even though there's a number of fonts within this eclectic style, it works and it still looks like it's consistent and everything was meant to be there. Here's two more examples. Both of these follow what I call a color grid template. And I'll show you what that is in a moment. But here's the thing. This is why consistency needs to trump any particular color pattern. So here we've got pink, dark, light, dark, light, dark, etc. If you have to add something into your Instagram feed, it can throw this out because we know Instagram follows in this kind of direction, pushing the images along. So that's why you need to make sure that your colors, your fonts and your style of images are consistent because it means if you have to add something in last minute, it's not gonna throw off the entire design. But if you do need to start off with a template such as one like this, where we've got a checkerboard effect, light, dark, light, dark, etc., that's a good way to begin so that you can get that nice color blocking in the background. To get that consistency, we start by adding our brand style guide to our Canva brand kit. That way, when we go to create these individual tiles, we can pull these brand elements throughout the tiles and create this curated look without following any particular template. Let's go check out where our brand kit is situated. Within Canva, up to the top right hand corner and select home, scroll down to brand kit, and you'll see here you can upload your logo and any particular brand elements here, so they're always on hand, as well as a number of different color palettes. I can also upload here my brand fonts. After finding how we can be consistent with our colors and fonts, we wanna look at the style of images. And we do that by coming over to elements, selecting photos, and typing in what we wanna search for. We'll look for women. I've gone with a very neutral color palette, but I just came along selecting images that were in this style and coloring. They're sort of muted, very neutral. This one would even work. Once you've selected all your images, try this neat trick to unify them even more. Select an image, come up to edit image, filters, see all, apply a filter to each image, making sure that it's exactly the same filter. Doesn't that look amazing? Another way to have a consistent feed is this monochromatic look where you have a variety of different images, but they're all part of the one color palette in various different tones and shades throughout. You can find these types of images under elements by typing purple, selecting photos, all the toggles and selecting the color and apply the filter. And you can see there's a whole lot of variety. As promised, I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom colored tile grids. This one here, the three by three, and the checkerboard. The checkerboard's pretty self-explanatory in alternating colors and 15 tiles in each. The three by three being a complete row with a background color of elements in this particular shade. As you can see here for a refresher, we've got the lemon, the pink, the orange tones, green aspects, and then back to yellow again. And when you're laying it out, create three yellow, three green, three orange, three pink, then repeat all over again. And this custom colored template is exactly the same here as it is here, but you can see that we go pink, a row of brown, a row of light, dark brown again, light, and then pink because we've replicated it, it continues to follow on. So you're gonna get those splashes of color throughout your neutral palette. And this is what it looks like in formation across your 15 individual tiles. 
If you'd like copies of these templates, there'll be a link in the description below. Now I want to show you how to set up an artboard so that you can start to experiment with the layout of your images. Here's the size that you need to create, so make sure you write down these numbers. On the Canva dashboard, we want to come to custom size and type in 3240 by 5400. That's equivalent to 1080p times 3 by 1080p times 5 to get our perfect grid. You want to make sure that your guides are turned on. You do that under File, Show Rulers, Show Guides. Now pull the guide across and you want to put one at 1080 and another at 2160. Now if you can't quite get it on there exactly, zoom all the way in to get a more accurate alignment. 2160. When all my grid lines are in place, I select R on the keyboard to bring up a rectangle and I just fill every single box with the colors that I want. I add my text, nothing fancy at this point, just laying out what I actually want to say and making sure each of the titles, when I play around with them, will be able to fit with an image. This is where it starts to get really fun. I take a look at the title and think, what kind of keywords can I put in the search bar to look for an image that is going to bring this title to life? My search led me to find these images, but as you can see, the hook's a different color, so is the brain, the pineapple has a yellow background, it doesn't here, and it has a rather large shadow. So I want to show you how to use elements that you find and be able to manipulate them so that you can fit them into your color palette. Beginning with the brain, I want to select it, edit image and remove background. So I'm starting with just the actual brain. Next, I want to select duotone and mustard. Don't worry that it's added the background back in there. Select the toggles and I'm gonna change this blue to this one and this yellow to this one. And then I'm gonna play with the intensity a little bit, bring it down, apply, and I'm gonna remove that background again, apply. And now I can even add my own shadow to it, toggles, and I'll, instead of a black one, I want a blue one. And there you go. To make Mr. Salesman glow, I remove the background. I come up to edit image, select shadows, glow. Then I wanna play with these toggles. Take the black to yellow, take the transparency all the way up, the size all the way up, and the blur all the way up. All I need to do is move him to the bottom so he looks like he's popping up from the bottom of the template. After all the fun editing your elements and images, you can edit your text with these types of effects. You can add a shadow, change the color, you can change the spacing, that sort of thing. You can make it bigger to make it stand out. You get to be as creative as you like. Once you're done, you want to select all the elements within that square, right click group, right click copy, head on over to your individual tile template and paste. You might need to rejig the design, just pulling it out a little bit. I usually design straight into these tiles, but I wanted to show you the overall effect. So if you need to do this, just repeat, group them together, copy and paste until you have them all in there. I will point out this image here is a light background image and this one is a dark one so that it continues to follow our flow. And you can always pop an extra bit of color just to keep people surprised. When all your tiles are complete, you can download, PNG, download, or as I said before, I'm gonna show you how to schedule them directly from Canva. Scheduling your posts within Canva is a pro feature, so you will need 
the pro account to be able to do this. Select your image, come up to the three dots, schedule, and then select the date and the time you'd like to schedule. I'm going to select 2 p.m. and select next. You need to select your channel, Instagram business. You can only schedule through Canva if you have an Instagram business account. If you don't, you can select here and it will show you how to switch your account from a personal one or a creator account. And the other two options is how to link through your Facebook page. So we're going to connect that now. Opening up Facebook, it'll ask me to continue. You want to make sure that you're logged into Facebook at the same time. I select the business account that I want to use, the brand method, and what pages I want to use with Canva and what Canva is and is not allowed to do. Done. Okay. My account's been added. I can select whether it's an image or a video post. This is an image. Check that the exact page that I want has been selected. Instagram only allows you to post one item per page at the moment, so just be aware of that. Add my caption and save and schedule. Canva notifies me that it has been scheduled. I can open it up within the planner here. If you're looking for this content calendar, it's located just under your brand kit in your tools. And then if I want to edit this post, I can click on it and it'll open up the pop-up where if I wanted a later time to paste my hashtags in, I can do so here and then I can resave it. There you have it. You've got the steps for an aesthetically pleasing and gorgeously created, curated Instagram feed that you scheduled with Canva. If you'd like to learn more about design and marketing strategy, come see me at The Brand Method on socials or thebrandmethod.com. Till next time, bye.